Okay, guys, Alec Pierce, scuba, Alec Pierce, scuba, tech tips, I got it. <laughs> anyway, here we are now, just a, just a little while ago, we did a tech tip on filling your scuba tank. Now, if you're a scuba diver, you have all had your tank filled, so you look at it, it looks simple, a guy puts a pipe on, turns it down like that, give me your money and walk out, right? Not quite that simple. If you watch that video, how to fill a scuba tank, you, you, you will see there's a lot more to filling a scuba tank than just hooking up a hose and turning a knob. However, uh, at, at the, when I did that particular video, some of you, some of the viewers, you noticed the fill station in the background. And um, the fill station here, uh, where I'm working right now, is, is not complicated, but it looks complicated. It looks complicated because it's plastic, clear plastic. So you can see all the pipes and the stuff in behind. Most fill stations, you can't see that. So you see five gauges and five knobs and hoses coming up. That's all you see. But when you look at this, it looks, my gosh, a plumber's nightmare, right? Actually, it's pretty simple. I'm going to take a minute and explain because some of you asked, how does that fill station work? It's really pretty simple. First of all, what is a fill station? All right, you have a compressor that compresses air. That's over there somewhere. And you have storage bottles into which the compressor puts the air. Big bottles, big scuba tanks, just tall. Yeah, they're not portable. You can't wear them on your back. Big scuba, 450 cubic feet. Yeah, six hour dive at 30 feet. Anyway, <laughs> no, they're very, very heavy. They weigh 125 pounds each. But anyway, they're storage tanks. We have a bunch of them, about 30 of them. It's a very, very large storage bank that we have here, and it's called a bank. And, uh, and uh, th those, those storage cylinders are arranged into groups. So there's three, there's actually four groups, but let's say three groups. And there's two groups at high pressure, and there's one group at a lower pressure. And those groups are called cascades. We fill using the cascade system. So when you bring your tank in, we fill the tank up to 2,500 PSI fairly quickly from a very, very large, large bank. When we fill your scuba tank to 2,500 PSI, it doesn't take much air to that bank. That bank is so large, it doesn't even notice that. That's why we do it that way. We fill it to 2,450 very quickly. And then using the other two banks, we top it up. So maybe the, the second bank, what we'll call the second bank, the low pressure is the first. The second bank, maybe it's at, um, maybe it's at 2,800. So then we will take, we'll shut off the first bank, open the second bank, and it fills your tank up to 2,800. It's only a 300 PSI jump. You see, it's very easy. And then we shut that off, and then the, the, the third bank is probably full at 3,600. So then we take air from that to fill your tank up to 3,000 from the 3,600. Again, it doesn't take very much. From 28 to 36 is not very much. It's so, through to 3,000, <laughs> that's right. So that's why it's done in steps. Uh, and anyway, all of, the, all of that air from the compressor and all those banks and going in your scuba tank, it all has to be controlled. So there's a, there's a control center. It's called a fill station. So the, essentially the fill station is a control center for the compressor and the banks and the cascade system and all of that. It's all controlled from right here. And it's really quite simple. Let me explain briefly what happens. First of all, we have to get the air from back there, the compressor room, to here. And I don't know, can you see those hoses up there, Kevin? See them? Oh, extremely well organized. You can tell this is a very professional dive store because the hoses are well organized. Clamped properly, held properly, and all kept in order. You see there's five hoses all together. Why are there five hoses? Well, you come back down here a little bit, Kevin, I'll explain. There are five hoses because, as I already mentioned, there are three banks of air, of pure air. There's a low pressure, and there's a second, then there's a high pressure, number two, then there's a third high pressure. A, a third bank is high pressure. One, number one is low pressure, number two is high pressure, number three is high pressure. That takes care of three, right? And then there's a fourth gauge right here, fourth hose, which comes directly from the compressor. Because there may be circumstances where we need to fill your tank right from the compressor. Supposing that the banks are down. They haven't been filled. We filled a whole bunch of tanks and they're down a little bit. So the highest pressure we have in here is 2,700. And you walk in at closing time and you want your tank filled to 3,000. We've only got 27. So we fill it to 27 off the banks, but then we have to fill it up to 3,000. You're not going to leave with 27. So then we shut off the banks and we fill directly from the compressor. So this hose in the middle and this gauge shows the compressor pressure. And air comes directly from the compressor right into your tank. Okay? So bank one, bank two, bank three, and compressor. That's four, right? What's the fifth one? The fifth one is nitrox. 
Yes, we store nitrox in banks here. We also produce nitrox right here. And that's a complete, it has to be completely separate. That hose never goes near the air or vice versa. The air never goes into that. So that's this last line, there's nitrox. 4,500 PSI of nitrox. It's that nitrox, at a specific, if you know nitrox, is at a specific mix. And for those of you that don't know nitrox, we're going to do a nitrox issue about how we make nitrox. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Like an old alchemist, you know, we pour this in, we pour that in, that in, we put it into your tank, and you breathe it, and you can stay down forever, right? No. <laughs> but anyway, this is for the nitrox. You see the green knob on here. Okay, so there we go. Five lines, three banks, which are from the storage banks. One, two, three, compressor, and then one more for nitrox. We'll leave that up for now. Okay, so you come in with your tank, and you want your tank filled to 3,000 PSI. So the first thing we do, after we have done the checks, watch that video we just did a while ago. Kevin, I just did the video on how to fill a scuba tank. Watch that, and we've checked your tank out. It's all ready to go. You've left the room, so it's perfectly safe for everybody except me. Uh, the fill station operator is the one that takes the risk. Next time you're in, the guy that fills your tank, give him a little tip. He's the one that takes the risk. Anyway, so I'm all by myself. So now I take one of the whips. doesn't matter which one. All these whips are connected. You see these four whips down here? Whips. That's what this is called. It's called a whip. I don't know where that word came from. Maybe it looks like a whip. I know where it came from. If one of these breaks off, I've seen this happen, Kevin. One of these breaks off, they whip around. Like mad, it can hurt you pretty badly. But anyway, we take one of these whips, we put it under your tank. And all these whips connect together in here so we can control air. We can fill up the four tanks at the same time. All right, we put this whip onto your tank. Now, now comes the interesting part. First thing we need to do is look at our banks and decide how much air we have. So you can see here in this particular bank, the low pressure bank, we only have 2,700 PSI. So we will take air from bank number one using this knob and feed it down into your whip. Open this knob, piece it into your whip. And we can fill the 2700. Once we get the 2700, there's no more air available in that bank. No higher pressure anyway. Lots of air, but no higher pressure. So it goes, stops. So we must have shut that off. So we do, we shut that off. Now, we want to fill it from 27 up to 3000. If you take a look at bank two, Kevin, can you see that? You take a look at bank two. Wow, bank two is good. It's at 42, 40. Yeah, 43, almost 4,400 uh, PSI, so 4,400 PSI roughly, so that's easy. So then we have your tank connected to the same hose, and we open this knob, and now the air from bank number two at 4,400 PSI comes down. Now, we've got to be careful now. we got to be careful. We open that up and watch the pressure gauge on the whip. It's right here. If I can get that thing out of there. Somebody twisted that hook. It's just a pressure gauge right on your tank, and we open this slowly, and we watch, and your tank is at 27, and it gets up to 3,000, 28, 29, 29, 50, 3,000, we shut it up. So your tank's at 3,000. The supply was at 4,400, but we don't want that much, so the rest we leave over there. Your tank is at 3,000. Now what do we do? We shut this off, shut off your tank valve, and we go for a coffee. That would be the smart thing to do because we want your tank to cool down. If you feel your tank now, it's really, really warm. So we let it cool down. And we come back in five or ten minutes, whatever, open up the tank valve and take a look. Now it's not 3,000 anymore. Now, now it's down to 2,700. So once again, we'll open this, open that, and bring it back up to 3,000. So we top it up so you get a decent fill. That process should actually be repeated at least twice for a good fill, for it to last. Otherwise, when you get to the dive site, you're going to lose a lot of pressure. You jump in the water, and your tank's going to say 2,500 PSI, and you're going to think the dive store operator ripped you off. He didn't. First of all, you're not paying for pressure. You're paying for volume. That's another story. Uh, you know, you take your time, get the tank filled nice and smoothly, slowly to 3,000, let it cool at room temperature, top it up, and now you have a proper fill. If it's filled to 3,000 PSI at room temperature, that is a full fill. That's a proper legal fill. 3,000 at room temperature, roughly 70 degrees, 21 centigrade. If you take that, that tank and you're in California, you jump in the water out there, which is 55 degrees or 14 centigrade, the, temper, the pressure is going to drop. It's going to, nothing you can do about it. It's going to drop to 2,700 PSI. It's the way it is. You didn't get ripped off. It was 3,000. That's the way it is. So anyway, that's what we do there. Now, if 
sometimes we get steel tanks in or higher pressure tanks in and we need more than that. So this particular bank is at 4,400. So we can use this and fill it up to 4,400. If we need to, you see the third bank, you see here, Kevin, can you see that one? The third bank is only at 41. This is unusual. Usually it's low, medium, high pressure, but this got mixed up a little bit. That can happen. Um, uh, so we don't have 4,500, do we, Kevin? There's not 45 here. So we can't fill the tank to 4,500 PSI. Yeah, yes, we can. We turn these off. And then we start the compressor. Boom, we hit the button, the compressor starts. Now the compressor right now is at 3,700, but we watch and the compressor starts to climb. When the compressor gets to 3,000 PSI, then we open this valve and the compressor fills your tank automatically to 4,500 or whatever we shut it off at. Just that simple. You got it? Bank one, we fill it to 27. Bank two, we fill it to 3,000. If we need to go to 4,500, we turn the compressor on and top it up. Just that easy. What's all this other junk? Well, this other junk is kind of important too. First of all, we have some interesting, interesting uh, devices on here that are great for safety and also for convenience. I got to be honest, some of this is for convenience. Right here is a regulator. This is a regulator. It's just like your regulator on your tank. Well, a little fancier maybe, but this is actually a first stage. That's what it is right here, a first stage. And it has a knob on here you turn this knob in, and, and that increases or decreases the intermediate pressure. What's that mean? The intermediate pressure is the pressure coming out, just like your first stage. High pressure from the tank goes into the first stage, and it comes out lower. This is the same thing. So we can, all this high pressure air feeds into that regulator. We can choose to bypass it, and the air just goes right through, or we can actually choose to use this regulator, and we can set this based right on here, We'll set this to 3,000 PSI, 3,000. Okay, what's that mean? Well, now we put the whip on your tank, open the valve and leave. No, we shouldn't do that. A fill station operator should never leave the fill station when a tank's connected. There are many things that can, that can go wrong and that he needs to be there to take care of. But in terms of simply filling your tank safely to 3,000 PSI, he could leave because that regulator will fill to 3,000 PSI and stop. That's right, 4,400 PSI. But if this is set for 3,000, it'll stop at 3,000. Many fill stations don't have that extra little convenience. Okay, But please, uh, if your dive store does, and if your dive store operators are watching me, you already know. That you're really up not to be leaving the fill station just because you have an automatic filler on there. So really, that's just about it. And when the gauge on the, on the whip on your tank says 3,000 PSI, it's all over. Shut off the knobs. Turn off the knob on the, on the whip, turn off the tank knob so no air comes out, bleed it, take it off, and put some tape on it to show it's been filled, take it to the customer, and uh, take your measly 5 or $10 or whatever it is for all this equipment. <laughs> air fills are really cheap, really cheap in consideration. And uh, send the diver on his way. Now you know that the air, I'm talking to the divers now, is pure because right here by the fill station, somewhere there should be a copy of their latest, and this was done just September the 14th, you can't get much better than that, and you, this, this is the latest test on there, and all the details, and, and, and the moisture in the air, and, and, and everything else passed, so that we know that this is pure air. And, uh, and so you, know, you need to have that on there as well. So basically, that's the way it works. Now, this particular fill station is a little more sophisticated than many others, but within reason, they all work the same way. There's a hose coming from the compressor, a hose from each of the banks, a valve to control them, and whips out the bottom end. So it looks like a rat's nest. What it isn't really. There's a couple of extra things in there. There's a safety blow off if the pressure gets too high. There's a one-way valve, so air. It could be possible that your tank has 2,500 PSI and one of these banks only has two. Technically, air could go backwards. We don't want that. We don't want air from your tank going into our bank. So there's one-way valves and so on. But that's basically it. It's really pretty simple. How does the nitrox work? We're going to do a separate session entirely on how we make. We actually make nitrox. Nitrox, by the way, for you who are not uh, in, into more into enriched air is exactly that. It's enriched air nitrox, E-A-N-X, enriched air nitrox. That's what it means, E-A-N. That whole thing is shortened to nitrox, nitrox. It simply means air that's enriched. What does that mean? It has more sugar in it. No, no, what it means is it has more oxygen. More ox oxygen is what you actually breathe. You don't breathe the other 70% of the air that you breathe. You, know, you only breathe, you only use the oxygen. So if you, if you, for various reasons, you may want to use 
air for scuba diving that is more oxygen than normal atmospheric air. Normal atmospheric air is at 21%. Well, often divers will use enriched air. It has more than 21%. It could be 28%, it could be 30%, 32% is very, very common. Air that has 32% oxygen instead of 21%. It could be 36, 38, 40, it's about as high as it ever goes. So, but air that has more than the normal amount of oxygen, more than atmospheric oxygen at 21, is called enriched air shortened to nitrox. And there are various reasons why divers might want to use nitrox. A lot of misconceptions about that. A lot of divers will think and will tell other divers that you use nitrox so you can stay down longer and go deeper. No, I got news for you, just the opposite. If you're using nitrox, you cannot go as deep as a diver on air safely. Yeah, crazy, huh? Why would you use nitrox? Well, maybe we'll talk about that. That's in the nitrox course, so you can Google it. It's pretty interesting. But yes, we actually make nitrox here. You can't, you can't go to your drugstore and buy it. Go and say, I'd like a bottle of enriched air, please. Yeah, I need about 3,000. That doesn't work. You have to go to a dive store, and the dive store, depending on its level, its size, and sophistication, will have different ways of making the enriched air you want at the different levels. And there are different ways to do that. So maybe on a, a future video, we'll do a short video, Kevin, I think, on how we make nitrox, because it's pretty neat. So this is the nitrox line coming down, and we, it's exactly the same procedure. All the air knobs are closed, and we use a nitrox knob only. And we fill using a nitrox whip. We, we actually use a whip, you see, with a green knob on it. So we only fill one nitrox tank at a time. We don't want nitrox to get mixed up with normal air, with regular air. We'll talk about that briefly and explain how we make nitrox and some of the ins and outs of filling with nitrox. Anyway, you, you folks that saw our earlier video on filling a tank and you noticed our fill station, asked about the fill station, there's a little more information for you. I hope that helps. I think we'll also do one, Kevin, on the compressor and the cascade, since I've talked about it. We'll actually go into the compressor room, right? Show them the compressor and maybe even run it for a few seconds and show them the cascade bottles and everything else. Yeah, it'd be kind of fun. So we'll do that, too. Anyway, there you go. How a fill station works, that's your scuba story. You're getting smarter every minute, aren't you? <laughs> I hope there's something in there that you enjoyed and that you learned from Alec Pierce Tech Tips. See you soon.